Hey everyone, what's up? This is Tom McFarlane, and this is part of the WordPress database migration series. In this particular screencast, we're going to take a look at a plugin that makes it a cinch to migrate your production database to your development database. And in the next screencast, we're going to take a look at how to migrate your development database to your production database. We will have all of the show notes and the resources in the post associated with this video. So after you've watched the video, feel free to read the post, grab the resources, and let us know of any comments or questions that you have in regards to the content. So with that, let's get started. If you navigate to the WordPress.org plugins repository and do a search for WP Migrate DB, you should come up with the following plugin. You may have to sift through a couple of other results, but make sure you land on this one. And the plugin description is simple. It says that it exports your database, it does a find and a replace on URLs and file paths, and it allows it to save you to your computer. Now, this is especially useful for those that have larger sites or are looking to somehow perform an easy migration between various systems. It could be development and production. It could be from one production server to another. But regardless, if you're working on migrating your database and there's strings that need to be changed or URLs that need to be changed, this is the plugin to do it. So at this point, I'm going to hop into my local development environment. As you can see, I am on dev.wptuts.com. This is my local environment. Yours may vary. It could be local host. It could be some other host name that you've given. Regardless, at this page, I want to click on Add New. And at this point, I'll do a search for WP Migrate DB. Notice it's the first result, so we'll click Install Now. And we'll confirm that we want to install this plugin. Once it's done, we'll activate it. And then if you hover over your tools menu, you'll notice that a migrate DB option has appeared. So let's click on that. In its purest form, you'll see the current address, you'll see a field for the new address, you'll see the current file path, you'll see a field for the new file path, and then you'll see some data options and file options that we'll discuss later in the screencasts. But first, we're not gonna do anything with the information here. Instead, what we wanna do is hop over to our production environment. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm going to follow the same process. I'm going to choose add new. I'm going to say WP migrate DB to a search. I'll install the plugin, confirm, and then I'll activate it. Similarly, I'm going to hover over the tools menu and then I'll choose migrate DB. This looks very similar. And instead of showing our local development environment information, it shows our production environment information. So here's what we want to do. We're migrating from production to development. So the new address is going to be http clone slash slash dev.wptuts.com. And the current file path is what it's detected on the server. So let's hop over to our development environment and we'll copy the current file path. Next, we'll paste this as the new file path. We'll replace the GUIDs or the GUIDS. We're not necessarily concerned with focusing on this in this screencast, but if you're interested, read the codex, read the tip here, and you should be good to go. Secondly, I'm not going to export the spam comments as it would just add bloat to the export file, but I do want to export the post revisions, and that's because I'm someone who edits my posts a lot, and I want to keep a history of the posts that I've edited. If you're not like that, then feel free to check the option. Next, I want to save the file to my computer, and I want to compress the file with gzip just to make the download a little bit faster. At this point, I'm ready to export the database. At this point, you should see a field here in your browser, and your mileage may vary depending on the browser you're, that you're using, and the SQL file has downloaded. You'll also notice that there have been a roughly 14,000 non-serialized strings that have been replaced, and a roughly 2,600 serialized strings that have been replaced. This isn't particularly useful, but if you're familiar with the settings API or the WordPress serialization process, this would mean something. In the text area, you can take a look at all the fields and the content and the strings that were replaced. But what we're really concerned with is the SQL file. So let's check this out in the downloads folder. It's a three megabyte zip file. Let's extract it. And then we get a 21 megabyte SQL file. At this point, we need to hop into our database front end in order to import this SQL file. Now, for those of you who are running something like XAMPP, MAMP, or a similar tool, then you should be able to go to localhost slash php myadmin. 
Then you can select the database. I'm gonna choose Dev WP Tuts. I'm gonna choose to import. I will choose the SQL file. And then I will kick off the import. Once the import has completed, you should see a success message at the top of the browser that says the import has successfully finished. And then you should be able to navigate to your local host installation. So let's navigate to the dashboard. Obviously it's forcing me to log in. This is because it's also imported the users table. This means that I need to use the username and password that I use in production. And from here, I'll log in. And notice that the first thing that I see is that there's an error with a themes directory. This is because I'm using a different theme in production than I am in development. It really shouldn't matter because I am primarily concerned with the data, not the theme. So if we take a look at the post screen, we'll see that it appears like all of my posts are here. If we go to pages, it looks like all of my pages are here. Let's look at media. It looks like all of my media is here. But this is a gotcha with this plugin. Please note that the plugin only does a database migration. In this case, I had to download the uploads directory manually from the server and place it in my development environment. Specifically, if you check out my uploads directory, you'll notice that it has all of the images dating back throughout my archive. I bring this up because some people have mentioned that they were not able to import media using this plugin. If you manually download your uploads directory and place it in your local development environment, then you'll be fine. At this point, let's take a look at the site. Notice that we're using the 2013 theme that ships with WordPress. It's got all of our content, categories, tags, featured images, it brought in all of our comments. If you happen to click on something and you notice that your permalinks are not working, hop back in to the WordPress dashboard, go to permalinks, click post name, save changes, then refresh, and everything should be good. This has to do with permalink and rewrite rules and how they're flush within WordPress, which again is outside the scope of this screencast. But if you scroll down, you'll notice the comments and everything's gone off without a hitch. In the next screencast, what we're going to do is take a look at how to move everything from a development environment into a production environment, as that's another alternative way of using this plugin to get a lot of work done. So I look forward to walking you through that process and seeing you in the next screencast.